Hey guys, Jinx here, one of the Monster Hunter Math Guys. So, Iceborne is here, and Tuna and I have been playing a lot of it on stream. Now, we are approaching the end of the story in Iceborne because we did get early review copies a day early from Capcom. Our plan was to originally just steamroll through the story, get access to all of the armors and everything so we could start making meta sets. But we have been making meta sets and looking at armor skill combinations and everything for so long, we could not resist the urge to start making and looking at different mix sets. Now, Iceborne has only been out officially for a day, so most of you are probably still very early on into Iceborne's story. And with all of the new armors, all of the new weapons, you're probably a bit confused as to what the hell to build. So, while it will still be a while until we actually get proper endgame meta sets put together, we can at least talk about what are the good early master rank weapons and armor to run. So, in this video, we're going to be talking about what a lot of the good early as well as mid-game weapon and armor choices look like. Now, of course, we are not a huge fan of big spoilers, so this video is going to be as spoiler-free as possible. At least as much as reasonable while we can still describe when and where to get the different armor and weapon pieces. So, just just as an example, we aren't going to be spoiling what the final boss or the endgame monsters look like, but we are going to mention what master rank star level quests certain monsters come from because you need to farm them, of course, to get these armor pieces. But before we dive too deep into that, just a quick reminder, we do have a Twitter where he posts updates about videos and things that interest us, and Tuna does have a Twitch where he streams almost every day. I do also stream here on YouTube, and I am streaming the entire Iceborne story on YouTube live. So, be sure to check us out if you're interested in seeing some of the Iceborne story play through. And as always, bloopers at the end of the video after the credits. Alright, let's start with the Master Rank weapons. So, one of the first things to keep in mind is that when you upgrade your endgame high rank weapon into a Master Rank weapon, you do lose the augments. However, it does refund all of the materials as well as all the zenith you spent on those augments. This does mean that if you run health augment, you will lose your health augment until you max out the new tree of your weapon and also augment it. And yes, there are new master rank augment materials that you have to farm for this. This does mean that if you have health augment and want to keep using health augment, you're probably going to have to stick with your high rank health augmented weapons until fairly late into the game. Now, I know that in our previous video talking about the pre-Icepawn sets you want to use, we talked about using the Ruin version of your weapon. Now, it looks like the Styx version is better because not only do you get to have more sharpness, but it has significantly more Blast. Blast now deals 300 damage per proc in Master Rank, so it's pretty nice to have higher Blast attack. But assuming that you don't want to do that, let's take a look at the weapon choices. Also, remember, all of these do require the farm up monster parts, which means that investigations are the way to go, so make sure you pick up lots of tracks while you're hunting monsters. Master rank investigations have so many boxes. So, first off, if you are using a weapon that does have a Jagger's Tree weapon, build it as soon as you get into master rank. These have 260 base true raw, are non-elemental for non-elemental boost, and have natural white sharpness, and you can build them from master rank 1 star quests. All of the materials you can get either from farming master rank grade Jagras or master rank Jagrases for the tough claws. And master rank Jagras is super easy to kill and farm quickly, so you can get this very early on. One note about this, the Great Jagger's Switch X runs exhaust files instead of a power file. While this does let you deal a little bit of KO damage to the head with your file attacks, it does mean that you don't get the 70% true raw you get from power file and sword mode. In my humble opinion, not worth it. The next good option for weapons is going to be the Puke Puke tree. So the Puke Puke tree hits 240 base true raw while having a lot of poison. Not to mention some nice slots, which is really nice early in mid-game into Master Rank because all of the armor kind of have terrible skills. Oh, and it has natural purple sharpness. Not bad. Now, Master Rank Poison deals a lot of damage, and it scales up to that higher damage immediately into Master Rank, while all of your actual other damage from your EFR does not scale until end endgame. This means while you're clearing through story, poison is a lot better relative to how it'll look in endgame, either in high rank or master rank. And on top of that, poison gets better the longer a fight goes on. And fights take a while in master rank because monsters have huge health pools, you don't deal that much damage yet, and you're having to learn entirely new monsters. So poison weapons are a very good choice for a lot of different weapons clearing through story. Now the particularly nice thing about the Puke Puke tree is you can max it out at Master Rank 2 star quests. 
all you have to do is farm some master rank Puke Pukes as well as some master rank Rathians. Easy peasy, done deal. Alright, so those are our two recommended early Master Rank weapons. You can definitely run these two all the way through Master Rank Story if you want, but if you're looking for some better mid-game options, then for mid-game we definitely recommend looking at the Nagakuga options. Now for Nagakuga weapons, sometimes they only max out at rarity 10, just like this greatsword here, but some weapons can max out at rarity 11, like these switch axes. For example, this Snaga Kuga Greatsword does only max out at the second rarity 10 version, but you can get it as soon as you get Folger Anjanath. With plenty of natural purple sharpness, 240 base true raw, non-elemental boost on top of that, and then also 25% base affinity, this weapon is very nice for clearing the story with. Now there are definitely lots of lower affinity, higher base true raw options in mid-game, but here's the thing, mid-game master rank armors are terrible. You'll be lucky if you can fit Weakness Exploit 3, Crit Boost 3, and some Crit Eye on your build. So stacking a whole bunch of affinity to negate negative affinity isn't a very good option while you're clearing through the story. But Master Rank Armor almost always does have at least either a level 4 if not level 2 slot in it. This means you can at least fit in Weakness Exploit 3 and Crit Boost 3. Higher affinity weapons are just going to synergize with that better, and higher sharpness weapons means you don't have to slot in Handicraft. Endgame will probably be looking more at using 0%, maybe negative 10% weapons for the meta options, but that's going to be end endgame. Or at least that's my educated guess on what it's going to look like. One note, you are going to need a Nagakuga mantle for this, and the new mantles are basically the master rank version of gems that the rarest possible monster drop. Now, you'll likely have to farm a lot of Nagakuga investigations to get this. Alternatively, if you do the Steamworks, you can get a Celestial Wyvarian print, which you can melt into any mantle of your choice. Up to you which one you want to do. Now, our final mid-game option, and in our opinion, probably your best option is going to be the Pink Rathian Tree. With 260 base true raw as well as 10% affinity, natural white sharpness as well as quite a bit of poison damage and a slot, this is a really good looking weapon. This is going to have around the same raw damage that the Great Jagger's weapon has while also having poison on it which means that you're gonna be getting a lot of poison damage out during the story. Now the rarity 10 version is the version you will most likely be using for most of the story. And you can get this as soon as you are in Master Rank 3 star quests, which is fairly early on still. You will need the Rathian Mantle, which will either require you to farm a bunch of investigations, or just use a Celestial Ticket to meld. Now you may notice we didn't cover any non-raw options, that's cause there's too many elemental choices to go through. Generally speaking, even with the nerfs 2 bow and dual blade, it's still better to go with the highest element option you have. But you're probably still just better off sticking it with your Kyar elemental weapons through the story because they'll still work just fine and you won't have to spend so much time farming for weapons during the story. Alright, those are our weapon choices, let's look at the armors. So first off, in the early game, master rank armor really doesn't matter. The armor skills are absolutely terrible, so you are dumpstering your damage for a bit more survivability. For example, when you max out the bone armor you get in master rank as soon as you start it, it maxes out at 126 defense per piece. With 5 pieces plus 30 from your armor, talon, and claw in your inventory, that's 660 total, which is a 27.59% increase in your effective HP. Now that's definitely nothing to sneeze at. However, you can use your high rank dragon set pretty deep into master rank without having too much difficulty. Roughly around 3 star quests is when monsters start to 2 shot you, and roughly around 5 star quests is when you get 1 shot. So those are the breakpoints at which point you probably want to look at getting new sets. For example, my preferred set, which is going to be a 3 to 4 star set, hits 775 defense, which is a 47.41% increase in effective health. That makes a big difference. But yeah, moral of the story is we don't really think you need to run Master Rank Armor until 3 or 5 star quests. If you are strongly to survive until then, run health boost, and if you're really strong to survive Master Rank Monsters until then, just kind of build whatever, they all have terrible skills. Just if you can, try to focus on getting Weakness Exploit 3 and Crit Boost 3 into your set. Now, once you hit early mid-ish game at 3 star quests and master rank, you have two options. So let's start with our max deeps version first, the Teoda Wrath. The Teoda Wrath runs a mixture of high rank and master rank armor. This is the set that Tuna likes to run. Including the armor talent and armor charm, this hits 595 defense. 
Also, keep in mind all the Master Rank armor we use is fully upgraded, but not augmented. You are not going to have a surplus of Master Rank augmentation materials until much later. 595 defense is enough to stop things from one-shotting you until well into Master Rank's endgame. Now, this set does let you run crit i7, crit boost 3, weakness exploit 3, along with attack boost 6, and then two flex handicraft decos in there as well. And of course, you didn't either have a fortify slash attack jewel or a satiated slash attack jewel, you could just sub in attack jewels into those deco slots. And the two handicraft decos in here are flex decos, so you can replace them with a vade window, or if you prefer, you can run some agitator, whatever you want. Now, the charm is also flexible, however, if you want to maintain attack boost 4, you will have to sub out one of the handicraft decos for an attack deco. Now, the direct upgrade to the set is running the Teostro Vambrace's beta from Master Rank in the arm slot instead. This gains you an extra level 4 slot, not shabby. This also ups your defense to 671 when fully upgraded. Now, if you get really lucky with investigations from picking up tracks, it's actually possible to get Teostra's Master Rank armor as early as 4-star quests. However, if you don't get lucky, you're going to have to wait until 5-star quests to get these arm pieces. Now, at 671 defense, that's a 29.48% increase over your high rank armor, which is definitely plenty for clearing the story. Between crit i7, attack boost 7, as well as weakness exploit 3, as well as crit boost 3, and master's touch, this is basically an endgame high rank meta set with a nice amount of defense. And you can still switch out the handicraft decos for other things if you want to. All in all, a very nice max deep set. Now, the set to run if you want more survivability while also dealing out decent deeps is my personal favorite set, the Full Odo Naga. This set runs a Folger Anjanath helmet along with Naga Kugo chest, arms, and legs, and an Oda Gar on waist, all master rank. Fully upgraded, this set hits a juicy 775 defense. At 775 defense, we are looking at a 13.85% increase in the effect of health over the Teodorath and a 47.41% increase over the high rank armor. Throw in the fact that we have health boost 3 in here, evade window 3, and you will have no problem surviving against all the new moves in master rank. Now, Stamina Surge 2 is just a side effect of the set, it's not really that useful. Now, the full Odo Naga is very effective because it's not only defensive, but you still get to fit a Weakness Exploit 3, Crit Boost 3, and up to Crit I7 as long as your weapon has a slot. And while we don't have Master's Touch for infinite white sharpness, we do have True Razor Sharp, which is almost as good. True Razor Sharp is the set bonus on the Naga Kuga armor. According to our friend Shepard, it is a 75% chance to not lose sharpness per hit instead of the normal 50% you get out of old Razor Sharp. Now mind you, this is RNG based, so sometimes you'll get 30 units of sharpness out of 10 units, sometimes you'll get 50, but on average you'll be hitting 40 units of sharpness per 10 units. Which is great, because it means with around 20 units of either white or purple, you should have enough for a fight, or at least until a monster transitions and you need to sharpen. Now the charm is a flex charm, so I have health boost in here because it's comfy for clearing through the story, but you can run literally anything in there. Agitator, attack boost, handicraft, whatever you feel like. Now if you want to squeeze in some more damage and lose some of your utility, you can change the arms for the high rank dragon arms, as well as change the helmet to the Nagakuga helmet to keep the true razor sharp. This drops you 60 defense, which is quite a bit, but does let you squeeze in quite a bit more damage skills. As for building this armor, you can get all the Nagakuga stuff farmed up as soon as you get to 3 star master rank quests. Now Folger Engine, that doesn't unlock until the 4 star quests. However, until then, you can use the Lumu Phantasm hood as a placeholder. This costs you a level 2 slot, but it is a placeholder. Alright, that about does it for our early and mid-game sets for Iceborne. Using these weapons and armor combinations, you should have everything you need to easily clear your way through the story of Iceborne. And yes, we will be releasing videos about the meta sets in Endgame for Iceborne once we get those all figured out. Alright, that is everything we got for you guys on this video, so thank you so much for watching. If you learned something new and this video helped you clear through the story, be sure to let us know by liking the video and leaving a comment below. It really does help a lot. Thank you as always to Honey over at HoneyHunterWorld.com for creating and maintaining the tools we use to make sets with. Also, a huge thank you to our friend Shepard. He did do testing on quite a few different things in Iceborne, including doing manual testing on the proc rate for True Razor Sharp. He is a phenomenal streamer who is well known for his full playthrough speedruns as well as just being good at pretty much every weapon in the game. So be sure to check him out, link to his Twitch in the description. 
And if you're interested in meeting like-minded hunters to hunt with an Iceborne together or just discuss the new changes, be sure to check out our Discord server, The Mathless Nest. And we do, of course, have a Twitter where he posts updates about videos and other things that interest us. And Tuna does have a Twitch where he does stream almost every single day. And of course, none of this will be possible without the generosity of our patrons. Thank you all so much for the support because it really means the world to us. Alright, that's all I got for you guys on this one. We do have plenty more Iceborne content coming out, of course. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to see those as soon as they come out. Alright, I'm gonna go play some more Iceborne now, guys, so happy hunting, I'll see you next time. Bye! He is a phenomenal steamer who- st steamer? Gotta get those wrinkles out. I'd be better off just sticking with your car- <coughs> Ooh!